Bless you, precious saints. I want to share a word with you um, from the Lord and that he spoke through Amos, the book of Amos, and specifically Amos 4. And it talks about the judgment on a nation, judgment on Israel, judgment on the nation of America for not repenting to the Lord and the Lord proclaiming judgment through Amos and his hand growing more and more uh, uh, severe for them to turn back and they would continue in the sin, they would continue in their idolatry, harlotry, abominations and the bloodshed and their indulgence and then and walking in their sinful ways and ignoring the Lord, rejecting the Lord. And this is exactly what the nation of America is doing and has done and continues to do. When Jonah went to Nineveh to proclaim that the nation would be overthrown from the top to the bottom, they repented. They were dressed in sackcloth and, and, and ashes in repentance to the Lord Jesus Christ. And the Lord repented of the evil that he was going to bring upon the nation. Yet America continues to ignore the Lord, continues to reject him and his word. And I'm not speaking to those that are the remnant. I know that there's a remnant. I know there's a faithful uh, uh, remnant that follows faithfully the Lord Jesus Christ. But the nation as a whole has rejected the Lord. And we are seeing the judgments come upon this nation so severely. And we're going to see very severe, massive judgments come upon the nation. Brothers and sisters, I am blowing the trumpet. I'm blowing the trumpet. I see a sword coming. I see war coming. I see great famines coming. Great devastation. Things that, that we've never seen before as, as this nation, in this nation. And they will surely come. And the Lord is still crying out out of His love. Because He brings judgment to bring man's heart back to him to bring man's hearts back to the Lord to bring us back to righteousness and so I, I am crying out to the remnant to to proclaim a fast to proca proclaim a, a prayer intercession If we're looking at what is taking place and what is going on in the nation today and all the news that we're seeing of all the things that are taking place, we are, are in desperate need of prayer and to return back to the Lord. And for the warriors, the intercessors, those out there that are prayer warriors to to intercede for this nation, to call for, for fasting and prayer. In the mighty name of Jesus. And so I'm going to go ahead and begin and um, share that with you, share Amos 4 with you. And again, it's it's an uh, uh, analogy, of, uh, a picture of what the nation is. What the nation is, is in, in deep, deep trouble. Deep trouble, folks. Praise you, Lord. I bless you, my saints. I love you. And so I'm going to go ahead and begin. In the mighty name of Jesus, be blessed. So let's look at uh, Amos 4. Amos 4 is a word of judgment. And it's a word that the Lord is in, uh, in wrath, uh, proclaiming judgment to a nation that is in harlotry and in rebellion to the Lord. And again, it's... it's uh, I felt in my heart that the Lord wanted me to bring this one forth just because it's it's uh, uh, we see the similarities uh, happening in America and in Amos 4 it talks about the uh, insolent abuse of prosperity um, 
as I'm going to read next, uh, Bashan uh, was a place of rich soil and, and pasture. And the animals fed there and they were one of the strongest and fattest. And so the bulls furnished a type of uh, mighty, fierce, and unfeeling men of earth. They were just um, big cows, as, as the Lord refers to. And so it, it also indicates the, the, the luxury that men and women had and the, a life of, uh, of um, indulgence, of wantonness, and, and apathy to the things of God and indifference to the things of the Lord. And so Amos points out the, uh, the princes and the judges as ringleaders in provocation of an insolence. And they grew fat and prosperous, and they abused their place of power. And they made themselves base and contemptible. So, and they're, they're uh, as, as they grew greedy and, and hungry for power, and their pleasure and, and grandiose uh, uh, selves that they made, they, they, they were self centered. They despised. The poor, they oppressed the poor, they oppressed those that were uh, not in a position of power, as we see today. They thought more highly of themselves than they ought to do, and like beasts, they found their enjoyments in self indulgence and luxury and power and oppressing the poor, just as we see today throughout the world. It's not just America. And so men who wallow in riches and surfeit themselves in pleasure, they fatten themselves for slaughter. And so men and, and worldly honor without true wisdom, the true wisdom is speaking the wisdom of the living God. That is the only true wisdom. Those are worse than beasts that perish. Men in worldly honor without true wisdom are worse than the beasts that perish. And so their eminence is their peril and their fall is disgraceful. Man that is in honor and understands not, understands not the, the wisdom of the living God is like the beasts that perish. In contrast, we see that when man is is totally given to the lord and the fear of the lord is the wisdom okay and, and job uh, 28 28 it says and unto man he said behold the fear of the lord that is wisdom and to depart from evil is understanding it's the fear of the lord that keeps men in in uh, away from evil and psalm 19 9 it says the fear of the lord is clean enduring forever the judgments of the Lord are true and righteous altogether. Uh, Psalm 34, 11 says, Come, ye children, hearken unto me. I will teach you the fear of the Lord. The fear of the Lord is the beginning of wisdom. A good understanding have all they that do his commandments. His praise endures forever. The fear of the Lord is the beginning of knowledge. But fools despise wisdom and instruction. And so... Again, it takes us back to, to Amos 4, talking about those that they, they were self-indulgent, they were into self, the prosperity, vanity, a harlotry, and, and away from the Lord. Um, for they that hated knowledge and did not choose the fear of the Lord. So it's, it's a choice that we make to, to fear the Lord. Praise to Heavenly Father. And the fear of the Lord is to hate evil, pride, arrogancy, and the evil way, and the froward mouth do I hate. The fear of the Lord is the beginning of wisdom, and the knowledge of the holy is understanding. The fear of the Lord prolongs days, but the years of the wicked shall be shortened. The fear of the Lord is strong confidence, and his children shall have a place of refuge. The fear of the Lord is a fountain of life. In the fear of the Lord, there's where we find life, the life of the living God, and it's to depart from the snares of death. This is, these are very, very profound scriptures. 
Fear the Lord is a fountain of life, and to depart from the snares of death. Better is a, li is a little with the fear of the Lord than great treasure and trouble therewith. The fear of the Lord is the instruction of wisdom, and before honor is humility, speaking of a humble heart. By mercy and truth and uh, iniquity is purged, is done away with. And by the fear of the Lord, men depart from evil. So the fear of the Lord is what keeps men from departing from evil. When men no longer fear the Lord, they are, are, are deceived and on their way to destruction. If we look at the wisdom of God versus the wisdom of this world, the wisdom of the, the Antichrist spirit, the wisdom of the world, okay, who is wise? James 3.13. Who is wise, a wise man and endued with knowledge among you? Let him show out of a good conversation his works. Conversation meaning behavior. His works with meekness of wisdom. But if you have bitter envy and strife in your hearts, glory not and lie not against the truth. Being in a, in a heart full of envy and strife is lying against the truth. This wisdom descends not from above, but is earthly, sensual, devilish, is demonic. Is that, that that wisdom of the world is demonic. For where envy and strife is, there is confusion and every evil work. So it's it's totally demonic, the wisdom of the world. But the wisdom that is from above, the, the wisdom from the Lord Jesus Christ is first pure, peaceable, gentle, and easy to be entreated, full of mercy and good fruits, without partiality and without hypocrisy. And the fruit of righteousness is sown in peace and them that make peace. And so we're seeing the difference in the wisdom of the world and the wisdom of God. And the fruits of the wisdom of God, what they produce. Okay, they're always in peace. They're sown in peace and in love and in faith and all these things. It's without hypocrisy. It's with a heart that is clean and pure before the Lord. And so, let's go ahead and go back to Amos 4 where we were. So, going back to Amos 4. So it says, hear this word. You kind of Bashan, kind of speaking of cows, okay? So he, I just made the, the analogy or the, the, the explaining of how, how the cows grew in Bashan and they were so strong. And so, <clears throat> you uh, kind of Bashan that are in the mountain of Samaria, which oppress the poor, which crush the needy, which say to their masters, bring and let us drink. So they are oppressing the needy. They are, uh, uh, there is no justice. There's no truth as we see today in this nation. And, and they're oppressing the poor. They're oppressing those that, that are bringing forth the word of the Lord. That those are that are speaking the truth. Okay. But yet they're saying, let us drink. Let keep bringing on the indulgence and all the abominations that, that are being done before the Lord. The Lord God has sworn by his holiness, by his holiness, that lo, the day shall come upon you that he will take you away with hooks and your posterity with fish hooks. Okay, so this is speaking of a severe judgment. And you shall go out at the breaches, every cow at, at that which is before her, and you shall cast them into the palace, saith the Lord. Come to Bethel. Bethel was a place of worship that had turned into uh, uh, an abomination, idolatry. It says, come to Bethel and transgress. And, and we see that today in many of the so-called houses of God that have turned into a den of thieves and and just they're preaching doctrines of devils and leading the people astray they're scattering the people and leading them away from the Lord and so come to Bethel and transgress and at Gilgal multiply transgression and bring your sacrifices every morning and your your tithes after three years so he's he's um, it says, and, and offer a sacrifice of thanksgiving with leaven, and with leaven, which leaven represents sin. Okay, 
and proclaim and publish the free offering. So they, they like to, to proclaim uh, that they did all these good things for the Lord, but yet their heart was so far away from the Lord. They were filled with sin and, and indulgence and oppressing the people. And so the Lord was saying, I see you. I see what you're doing. I see your, your abominations. I'm seeing that you're bringing all these, these uh, so-called sacrifices unto me. But they're, they're filthy. Okay. Because they're, they're not done for the Lord. It was just to, to brag to, and pride. And so Israel has not returned to the Lord. Amos 4, 6, it says, And I also have given your cleanness of teeth in all your cities, and want of bread in all your places, yet, yet, have, not, yet have you not returned unto me, saith the Lord. So this is speaking of famines. It's speaking the Lord breaking the staff of bread. And he's saying, I've, I've given you hunger and famine and yet you still don't return to me yet you still don't realize that this is a judgment yet you still don't realize that the shelves are empty like we see today you don't realize that the 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 supply chain is breaking down and you no longer have the choices you had before you don't realize that the the prices of are have uh uh, the inflation is is going up and up and up and you can't afford the things you don't realize that all these things that are coming on the nation is a nation that's forsaken the Lord and the Lord taking off his hand and I also have I have withholding the rain from you and we're seeing that in the nation of America today there's great terrible droughts in many areas and there's there's uh floods and others okay so i've withholding the rain from you when there were yet three months to the harvest and i caused it to rain upon one city and caused it not to rain upon another city and we're seeing that today like i just said we're seeing so many areas that are in so much drought that is causing even uh, problems with power and and <clears throat> we're seeing other areas that have suffered and are uh, uh, great uh, floods and so one piece was rained upon and the piece were with where upon it rained not withered so two or three cities wandered unto one city to drink water and so speaking of of migration of people trying to leave one city to uh, another to get water because there's no water and these are these are things that are coming to this nation folks are we in prayer and seeking the Lord are we understanding the judgments coming upon the nation are we uh, pleading before the Lord for mercy but they were not satisfied you have not returned unto me saith the Lord so again it's the Lord saying I'm doing these things for you to come back to me to bring righteousness into the hearts of men to get men to turn away from the wicked ways and yet they still don't return to me they still don't realize who's the one that's truly in control and so i have smitten you with blasting and mil uh, mildew when your gardens and your vineyards and your fig trees and your olive trees increase the palm worm devoured them yet you have not returned unto me we've seen that as well we've seen the 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 um praise you lord the locusts attacking the agriculture in many areas of this world and plagues and things that affect the food supply and yet people continue the rebellion uh, Amos 14 I have sent among you the pestilence after the manner of Egypt your young men have uh, I slain with the sword and have taken away your horses I have made the stink of their of your camps to come upon uh, come up unto your nostrils yet have you not returned unto me and so we're seeing things done to to the world today that are being used as tools to advance an agenda of uh, revelation 13 as the lord told us in his word 
that all these things would come to pass and we're seeing it unfold before our eyes we're seeing revelation 13 uh, rise up before our eyes we're seeing the oppression the the uh, the taking away of freedoms and so i have overthrown some of you as god overthrew sodom and gomorrah and yet <clears throat> and you were as firebrand plucked out of the burning yet you have not returned unto me saith the lord therefore thus will i do unto thee o israel and because i will do this unto thee prepare to meet your god o israel prepare to meet your god these are very profound words for lo he has formed the mountains and created the wind and declared unto man what is his thought that makes the morning darkness and trades upon the high places of the of the earth the lord the god of hosts is his name and so so although the uh, amos 4 is such a harsh word it's a word for us to to shake us up and to wake us up and to get us to intercede for this nation intercede for our brothers and sisters all over the world not just america but all over the world and to uh, bring people to the lord i always like to leave uh, with a word of of comfort with a word of encouragement with a word of faith because the lord uh is faithful the lord is compassionate and uh in uh, psalm 18 it tells us the lord is my rock you see we are to hold on to the promises of the lord we are as the children of god we are to be the light and the salt of the earth and we are to be uh, holding on to the promises of god as as dire times are coming and things that are, are going to come our way to try to shake our faith we're going to have to hold on and settle it in our hearts to be uh, unmovable okay and so uh psalm 18 for example it says the lord is my rock and he is our rock he's our fortress he's our deliverer he's my god he's your god my strength he's your strength in whom i will trust we have to put our trust in him he's our buckler and the horn of our salvation and he's our high tower and so we hold on to the lord we put our faith and our trust fully in the lord just like shadrach meshach and abednego that through the fire as they were uh, prosecuted as they were oppressed to conform with the beast system they stood strong and faithful to the living god and so i will call upon the lord who is worthy to be praised he's the only one worthy so shall i be saved from mine enemies psalm 36 praise you lord how precious is your steadfast love uh, psalms 36 5 it says thy mercy o lord is in the heavens and thy faithfulness faithfulness reaches unto the clouds thy righteousness is like the great mountains thy judgments are great deep O lord that preserves man and beast and he does how excellent is your loving kindness O god how excellent is his loving kindness towards his children he loves us so deeply therefore the children of man put their trust under the shadow of your wings these are the things that we hold on to his promises his word we, we, we stand on his word. We stand on, the, on his truth. He is the truth. They shall be abundantly satisfied with the fatness of thy house. And thou shalt make them drink of the river of thy pleasures. Of the pleasures of the Lord. For with thee is the fountain of life. In, in, the light, in thy light shall we see light. We only see light through his light. His word. His truth. He is the light. O oh, continue thy loving kindness unto them that know thee, that know you, and thy righteousness to the upright in heart. In Daniel 11, uh, I believe it's 32, it talks about uh, those that know their God, those that know his truth, his word, his, his ways, his precepts. Those that know God by keeping his commandments are those that are going to do great ex exploits. That's not in the future. The great exploits are now. The, the great works for the Lord are now. We're doing them now. We have to speak up for the Lord now. 
my precious brothers and sisters. Psalm 36, 10, I'll continue thy loving kindness unto them that know thee, and thy righteousness to the upright in heart. Let not the foot of pride come against me. And we pray that over our lives, that the foot of pride would not come against us, and let not the hand of the wicked remove me. They are the workers of iniquity fallen. They are cast down and shall not be able to rise. And so I leave you with that word of hope and the promises of God. Uh, and, but it, the judgments, as I've, I've said, are coming. And it's not that I'm saying it. It's that God is saying it. God has put it in His word. And it's for us to wake up, for us to, to come back to the Lord. As we're seeing harsh things coming. Jeremiah was in the in the middle of uh, judgments as they happened, and 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 he went through great trials. He was the weeping uh, prophet because he uh, wept and grieved for his nation, and he cried out to his nation. He proclaimed judgments to his nation, and they would not listen. And judgments came, and he went through it with them. And so we will go through it. We're going to go through hard times. And we need to be prepared. We need to have our hearts settled. Okay. And so I bless you. I love you, my precious saints. And I pray this word touches you. I pray that it uh, blesses your heart. And that um, that it causes us to, to seek the Lord uh, in, a, in a, a hundred percent. That it causes us to, to repent and be humble. To live a holy life. And to be about our Father's business. I bless you until soon again, Lord willing. Be blessed. In Jesus' name.